Hello everyone, welcome to this video. Today, we're going to be taking a look at how to get the best start in Skyrim. This is primarily going to cover one-handed and two-handed warriors. However, if you are a mage or a archer, you can certainly pick up some tips from this as well. Basically, it's going to cover how to get good items in the beginning so you can get an advantage in the early game. I'm going to very simply guide you through how to do that. So, let's get right into it. The game plan inside of Helgen is pretty simple. You really just want to train your one-handed or two-handed, depending on what character you are. Stay behind Hadvar, let him take all the hits, and you just try your best to get as much XP as possible. As far as what to loot, loot ingredients, loot potions, and loot any ingredients for vegetable soup. Make sure you take the sacks as well. Once you get to the torture room, if you happen to join the Imperial, here can be a decent opportunity to kill the torture because he has valuable armor, but it's not very easy to do. The best way is really to use flames, but then you don't get to drain your one or two handed. Here you can pick up a shield, however I recommend using a light shield. Some of the storm cloaks may have a light shield, but if they don't have it up until this point you can go ahead and pick up the heavy shield. You ideally want to kill both of the imperials. I would only recommend lock picking the middle cage and nothing else so that you get the robes and uh, the loot that's inside. Lock picking is not a combat skill, it's gonna level up your character but not really progress you in terms of proficiency in combat. Your first perk point I recommend putting into novice restoration unless you know for certain you're never gonna use restoration and pick up these bone meals from the skeletons, it can be used for resist fire potions. The next spike coming up take cover behind Hadvar, you do want to try and be as effective as possible, only use light attacks, that's gonna give you more XP but Hadvar can be downed potentially in this fight depending on how high your difficulty and how slow you are. So make sure you help him but just use light attacks. Against the spiders you can use flames, make sure they don't do the jumping attack on you and try not to get hit with the poison as this is gonna stop your stamina from regenerating for about 5 seconds. Let Hadvar take point again if you want to. You can loot the spiders for the frostbite venom. Against the bear the annoying thing is that you can catch bone break fever so you can potentially make a quick save before fighting him and just use flames against this animal as well if you don't want to quick load. You want the bear pelt, this is gonna help you later on. Once you're outside, pick up any ingredients that you see, but vaguely make your way towards uh, the Guardian Stones. If you want to fight the bandits in the treasure map camp, you can. I recommend using flames on one of them. Make sure you attack one of the warriors and not the archer, and keep backing up and just burst fire flames against one of them. Try to kill one, focus fire on one. If he's a two-handed warrior, make sure you don't get close to him, and if he hits you, definitely heal. When the fight is 1v1, you can choose whether you want to use flames or train your melees, but always keep in mind that the archer could potentially hit you. I don't like using armor for this fight because I like to keep mobile, but it's up to you. The archer is the one with the treasure map, so you have to kill him and loot that off of him. When you're done, you can loot the camp. I only recommend picking up the skill book. It's a one-handed skill book if you are a one-handed character. And then you can head over to the Shrine of Talos. If you've caught any diseases, you can use it. Unless you're on survival, then you can choose whether you want to do that or not. Head to the Guardian Stones if you didn't touch them before starting this fight. And there isn't really a wrong option as to what to pick in the Guardian Stones. Against the bandit that's guarding Embershard Mine, you can practice a little bit of combat. There could be some wolves close by, so be careful of that, but you always have the option to go inside and he should not follow you. And as a matter of fact, if the wolf engage, then just run inside and the wolf and the bandits will kill each other. If you take one hit, just heal, especially if he's using a mace. But this is a good way to practice your combat skills, spacing, distancing, all that stuff. If it gets too difficult, of course, you can just go ahead and use flames. Against these early level bandits, I usually pick up everything except their weapons and if they have shoes. I pick up their boots, I pick up their armor, and their fur gloves. Things that have good weight to value ratio, basically. Try to find a steel weapon, a mace is ideal. And then actually doing Ember Shard Mine is optional. Pick up a few torches, five or so. Don't step on the trap, you can use it against the next set of enemies if you're struggling. But basically what you want to do against the first enemies, the ones you hear talking. Stay over here in this corner and just wait for the dialogue to finish. They will split up, one will go to sleep, the other one will go to the back. And if you sneak past the one that's sleeping, you can engage the one in the back one on one. But you do have to fight him quite quickly because sometimes the guy can wake up and come up behind you. This is another fight where you can practice your combat skills. You can also use armor if you want to. After lowering the bridge, go to the entrance. Here's where I would recommend potentially using the trap because sometimes one of these bandits are a two-hander. But you have to be pretty good with your timing as far as the trap goes. There is a way to cheese this fight and the one before as well. There's basically, if you go to the water, there's a rock that you can stand on and the enemies will just be swimming around you. This is a way to cheese every single enemy in Ember Shard Mine. You can position yourself in such a way that the bandit actually falls on the trap even though it's already been triggered. Most of the fights going forward should be a one-on-one. -on -one. The one with the bandit is by the forge. You have to try and kill him quite quickly because once you drop down here, a two-hander has already activated. I would recommend going all the way back where you found that treasure room so that the archer can hit you. 
and you actually do have to go quite far back because he hits you from a ridiculous distance. Against two-handers, if you take one single hit, you have to heal and just use your spacing. Loot everything in Ember Shard Mine that you want to. And make sure you bring some iron ores if you want to make some armor when you get to White Run as well. Once you get outside of Ember Shard Mine, open up the map if you haven't done that already. And then you can go across the river to the tree stump where you find the treasure. Speak to Alvor if you manage to catch him before he enters the house. Just go through the dialogue like normal. His ingots should be free to take if you happen to join the Imperials. And you may have to get through the dialogue inside the house before Alvor goes back outside to work so you can sell things to him. I recommend selling to Alvor first because he cannot buy everything, while Luke and Valerius can buy everything. Turn it daytime if it isn't, find Feindal or Sven, join one of them, I recommend Feindal. Do the little quest with Camilla and sell off anything you don't want at Lucan's. If you have 100 or so carrying capacity, you can actually save your items till you get to Whiterun, so you can get the persuasion. But leveling up speech ridiculously in the beginning it may not be such a good idea. Ask Feindal to join you, get his key and enter his house. He doesn't actually have to follow you. You can just tell him to go away. Then loot Feindal's house. If you're a two-handed warrior, you'll want the troll fat on top of the stove. That's important as well as his pelts. Then head to Whiterun. When you go across the river, there's a mud crab. Kill him and take his claws. When you kill this wolf, if you happen to catch any diseases, it's not a big deal. Here's a great tip. This is especially useful for people who play survival. There's an eagle flying around here. You want to take it out because it has three hawk feathers which cure disease. You may have to wait a little bit. Eventually he does land on his little nest, but it takes about a minute or so. Then just head to the Whiterun farm. Against the giant that the companions are fighting, you can try and get some one-handed or two-handed levels. He shouldn't one-shot you. This giant is a little bit weaker, kind of like a tutorial giant. But uh, make sure you don't hit the companions. I would recommend making quick saves. When you're done with the giant, you can loot anything that you want or that you're missing from the farm. And do the trick where you drop all but one of your cabbages, find the guy, and then sell him one cabbage. Now you should be able to loot the tomatoes as well as the barrels in his farm. This is a trick you're going to use every single time basically that you go to a farm so before going to white run you want to come over here to the side close to where the guard towers are and make your way towards the city wall there should be a corundum ore vein mind that this is going to help you make a backpack persuade the guard if you want to train speech and then as soon as we enter white run we want to actually go back to helgen once you fast forward to helgen make your way west we're going to where you exited helgen you can use the torch trick here if you want to run without stalling Basically, you have to double tap the sprint button and hold it when you're almost out of stamina. Tap, tap, hold. Once you see a little house icon, go towards that. And then you should find this clearing here with three Corundum ore veins. This is going to help you make some armor, some steel armor. After you're done, fast travel back to Whiterun and turn it into daytime if it, if it isn't. First thing you do is you speak to Avenichi and ask her, do you work around the forge all day? Basically, this is going to give you a small little quest from her. Next, go over to the smelter and you're going to smelt one corundum ingot. And then you're going to take the iron ore veins that you mined in Ember Shard and use the rest of the corundum to make steel ingots from those ores. You can make a few iron ingots if you want to, but ideally you want to keep a few iron ores as you can make them into different things. Go to the tanning rack. This is where the bear pelt and the pelt that you find at Feindal's house is going to come in handy. Make everything into leather strips except for leather. You need to have four leather left so you can make a backpack. I recommend the mage backpack but you can't really go wrong here. Use a perk point in steel smithing and now you can make the steel armor if you want. However, you only really need the limbs, basically the gauntlets and the boots as the Yarl of White Run should give you a heavy armor chest piece if your heavy armor is higher than your light armor. And as far as the helmet goes, we're going to get a better helmet here soon. But I wouldn't recommend really making any armor at all. It's not necessary. First things first, find the beggar. If he is not in the market, you can go up to where the big tree is. And during the daytime, you will always either find the beggar here listening to the guy who's speaking. Or you'll find the little girl with the green dress. She also counts as a beggar, so you can give her a coin. She always sits in the same location. Go back down and talk to Carlotta Valentia. Ask her uh, if someone's bothering her. Tell her that you're going to help her out. After that, go right next to the inn and pick up a woodcutter's axe and cut one wood. Then you can move your character to, to get out of the animation. If you don't see this woodcutter's axe, it's most likely because you don't have the unofficial patch installed, which means you have to go back to Riverwood and pick up one there or potentially Embershard Mine. Go into the inn, speak to the bard, and you should be able to persuade him because you gave the beggar a coin. Then give one firewood to the innkeeper and now everything in the inn should be free. Here you can collect some more tomatoes for your vegetable soup. 
just loot until your heart's content. Remember, leeks and tomatoes are usually the things that you'll be missing. But you don't really need to make vegetable soup just yet. We'll do that when we go to the palace. Go back outside and talk to Carlotta Valentia. And you should be able to loot her ingredients as well. Then you can go into Bellathor's shop. There is a speech skill book in here, but I don't recommend picking it up just yet. If you're missing some tomatoes or if you want some more for some reason, you can buy it from him. Otherwise, sell off anything you don't want to bring with you. Then go up to the district with the big tree and go inside the Temple of Kinnereth. You can touch the Shrine of Kinnereth for an extra 25 stamina. This is going to help you run around a little bit. And then go over to one of the shelves with health potions on top of it and pick up a restoration skill book. Your goal in restoration is still to get to 25. Go over to the Companions headquarters and on one of the tables should be a book. For heavy armor, only pick this book up if you are a heavy armor character. Then go down and start the companion storyline. As a matter of fact, if you're planning to do the Star of Azura, you probably shouldn't pick up uh, the heavy armor skill book. Talk to Cadillac, and here you have a two-handed skill book as well as a Daedra Heart. If you want to pick up the Daedra Heart because you want to do the Volendron quest that unlocks a level 9, highly recommend that if you're a two-handed warrior. Drag it away from everybody and pick it up while you're in sneak mode. You have to wait until these guys are finished talking. Then you should go out and train with Vilkas. Vilkas can kill you, but if you do this early level, he shouldn't have enough damage to one-shot you. Ideally, you want to wait until he draws his weapon before you hit him. If you're a one-handed warrior, keep his sword. If you are a two-handed warrior, do not. You can also go up to the Skyforge and pick up a smithing skill book, but I do not recommend this either. Unless you are a character that started with 20 smithing and you want to get to 22 so you can upgrade steel to superior. But this is not really necessary. Now you can head over to Dragon's Reach. First things first, you talk to Avenichi and tell him that you have his daughter's sword. Now the barrel with Avenichi should be free to store your items. Second, speak to the Jarl and just go through the dialogue. Next, go over to Faringar and ask him if he's the only wizard in Whiterun. After that, you can buy four books from him. If you're an anniversary edition, you may want to buy more. But it's going to be Fast Healing, Lesser Ward, Oak Flesh and Turn Lesser Undead. Learn the books and wait for this dialogue to finish. When the Jarl tells Irleth to send a detachment to Riverwood at once, you can speak to him and you'll start the main quest. Go over to the kitchen, loot everything you want, including the rooms below, and now you can make your vegetable soup. Go to Arcadia and before you enter, pick up three Dragon's Tongue if you are a two-handed warrior. Give her the Frost Souls from Farangar and then loot everything in her shop. Make a quick save so that you don't accidentally steal something. If you want, you can put one perk point into alchemy if you know you're going to use alchemy on your character so that the potions that you're about to make become just a little bit better. Make a quick save before you start making potions. First is a smithing potion, blister ward, and sprig and sap. Next, troll fat and dragon's tongue is a two-handed potion, only for two-handers. If you want a one-handed potion, you can make it with hanging moss and rock wobbler eggs. And as far as elemental resistance potions, resistance to frost and fire, snowberries is the main ingredients here. Snowberries and purple mountain flower make frost and snowberries and bone meal, which is the best one that I would recommend, make fire. You can also make fire potions with dragon's tongue and fly amanita, but I don't recommend using these. This is just going to give you a little bit of a boost in a difficult fight. We're pretty much done in white run. If Bellathor's shop isn't locked, you can go inside and sell off anything else that you don't want to have with you. And that's it. Next step is going to solitude. Make sure you discover the stables in solitude. And here we're going to do the same trick that we did in the farm in white run. Drop all your cabbages except one, make sure that the NPCs don't pick it up. And now you can loot anything in the farm and anything inside the house. If you are a mage, there's actually Adar cheese wheels, which can be pretty good for elsewhere fondue in here. You can take as much or as little as you want. Next up, you want to go and discover solitude. And then after that, it's pretty much straightforward. Go over to the statue to Meridia, get the elemental fury shout, that's right next to the statue, and then go to the steed stone, if you want the steed stone. After you're done, fast travel back to the stables, and this time we're going to Riften. Right, so when in Riften, try to persuade the guard. If you can't, just walk around to the side, where I'm showing you on screen, and you're going to enter through the Riften metery. The reason you can't persuade the guard is because you haven't given the beggar a coin. When you enter through the Blackbriar metery, take a right down the corridor, then a left and a left. Then you should exit out into the city of Riften. Here, there's a bunch of things. It doesn't really matter what order you do them in, but it's ideal that you do all of it. Make sure it's daytime so that the NPCs are in their position. You can start off by talking to Brynjolf and uh, starting the Thieves' Guild. As soon, as soon as you can, give the beggar a coin. After it tells you to steal Medesi's ring, go inside the inn to fail the mission on purpose and talk to Louis Latrache. This is going to give you a free horse. Then you can go out towards the entrance of Riften into... Helga's bunkhouse and touch the statue of Dibella. 
this is a little boost to your speechcraft. Not as good as Senethod, but it's very, very close and easy to get to. Now you can talk to Brynjolf, tell him you failed the mission. It doesn't really matter, this is just the fastest way to make your way through it. Then you want to talk to an NPC called Dinya Balu. She happened to be in the market this time, but I'm gonna skip forward in time until she happens to be inside the Temple of Mara, because that is where she usually will be, and that is probably where she's going to be for you. Now we go with talking to Dinya Balu inside of the temple. Next, go to the orphanage and just equip your fists. Make sure you show everyone how strong you are. Then go to the Rift in Jail to continue the CB Blackbriar quest. If you've given the beggar a coin, you should be able to persuade the guard as well as persuade CB Blackbriar. The market in Riften is a great place to sell off your items, so you can do that if you have any access of things you don't want to bring with you. Go on into the Riften docks. The exit is very close to the blacksmith's forge, and try to look around for an Argonian in a blue dress. Give her a health potion, and the fish barrels in Riften should be lootable. She can also be inside the Riften fishery. You might have to look around for that NPC a little bit. Fast travel to the stables and make your way east towards the Blackbriar Manor. Be careful going there though because there could be some random encounters. If you're a 200 warrior, the enemies on the left in that little tower will have a skill book and there is a Corundum ore vein to the right of the bridge close to a waterfall. The Blackbriar mercenaries have pretty decent armor but they should be level 1 bandits so they shouldn't be very difficult to kill. Just try to keep mobile to avoid the arrows and uh, get both of their armors if you have the steed stone. Put them on, as it's not going to weigh anything. I recommend removing the armor and going into sneak mode before entering the Black Briar Manor. But just to be sure, make a quick save outside before going in, because sometimes they do spy you due to your low sneak. Get on Frost, head southeast up towards the little mountain, and there should be a book under a shield that you need to pick up. Then carefully make your way down the mountain to go to the Dawnguard Fort. This is another location where sometimes there can be a random encounter. Make sure there's no one around when you enter, that way Frost doesn't engage in a fight and leave his current location. Make your way up to Fort Dongard, speak to Durak if you want a crossbow and some bolts. In Fort Dongard I kind of recommend looting everything or any anything that you have room for, but uh, Fort Dongard is one of the best locations for Salt Pal, hands down, in the entire game. You also have a 100% chance of finding an amulet of Talos here in one of the balconies. And there's a cooking spit if you want to turn them into vegetable soup. However, I think the ingredients weigh less than actually having them combined into soup. Next, you're going to have to go back to Frost. And here's this random encounter that I talked about. This enemy is pretty strong. When an enemies are just named Orc or Red Guard or Imperial, I don't like to fight them early game. So I'm just going to run away on the horse towards the manor. And we're basically going behind the manor towards a little mine icon. This mine has three gold ore veins, which can be pretty decent for some early smithing levels, as well as a bunch of ingredients. Pretty useful mine to check out. There are no enemies in there either. If you have the blessing of the Bella, or you've given the beggar a coin, you should be able to persuade Latrush. If not, I recommend doing it. This is how you're gonna get the horse. Then you simply go back to the stables. Make sure you get on Frost one or two times before fast traveling to Windhelm, because this horse doesn't always follow you the first time. When you get to Windhelm, look around for Frost. If he's not there, go back to the Riften stables. You really don't want to lose this horse. Before we head into the city of Windhelm, we're gonna go over to Ingle Barrow, which is northeast. Walk past all the farms until you see a ruin icon. Enter the ruin. It's very, very straightforward. You need a claw for a puzzle. The puzzle is snake in the grass, bird in the sky, and the dolphin in the water. There's a trap you need to watch out for. This probably will kill you early game. And Ingo, you don't have to fight him. Just walk in, pick up his helmet, and get out. Then we can go to Windhelm and tell Aventus that we've killed Grelad for him. Loot his little shelf, it can be pretty useful items there. Once you're down there, go out to Kynesgrove. One thing I'd like to say about Kynesgrove, there is a Malachite mine here. You can mine all the ores and bring them with you northeast to another mine that has ebony ores. And if you sell these Malachite ores to the blacksmith there normally, you can make some money. And if you sell the ebony ores to him by actually picking I have ores to sell, you can make more money. This is pretty good early game. Ebony is very rare and very useful, but by the time you're high enough level to make use of Ebony, this mine should have respawned. You can make upwards of 3000 gold. If you want some silver weapons, you can go over to Gallows Rock, west of Kynes Grove. These weapons are pretty strong against undead, the best thing you're gonna find. And there are some draggers that hold some good treasure that you can make good use out of early game. It's very difficult if you're a 200 warrior though. Usually they have one-handed weapons, the ones outside anyways. 
Then head back to Kynes Grove, sleep in the inn, and you should be teleported to the shack where you can start the Dark Brotherhood. Exit out of the conversation with Astrid. Kill the guy all the way on the left. He has the most valuable items on him. And now we can continue with the Dark Brotherhood. This is good if you're a light armor character. Then we're gonna head to Markarth, which we're gonna make a decent penny here as well. When you land in the Markarth stables, ask the guy wearing green clothes how long has he been training dogs and start his quest to bring dog food to the keep. When you're on to Markarth, you wanna kill the Force One agent and save Margaret for a little bit of extra money. Make a quick save or be careful you don't hit anybody else. Once the fight is over, talk to Margaret, she should give you an amulet. And Markarth is a bit weird, you may have to reset, meaning exiting or passing the time a couple of times so that the NPCs can get situated into their original positions. But basically there's a whole bunch of favorite quests you can do in Markarth. Go up to the blacksmith, talk to her about her apprentice, give her the book, exit the conversation and then talk to her again so she can make you bloodkin. You can then go to the hag's cure, do a little mission for her as well, tell her that the hag's cure is a unique name. She should give you something else to bring to the keep. If at any point you find the beggar just give him a coin, always useful to do that when you're in cities. And now Kira, this shopkeeper close to the entrance of Markarth, has reset to her original position, so I'm gonna get a quest from her too, to bring to the keep. If you find this vigilant guy standing outside the House of Horrors, ask him if he needs any help. This will start the quest for the Mason Molag Bal. But even if you don't do the quest now, it will lock him at a lower level once he enters the house. Finally, you can head into the keep and persuade Brother Verilis to give you the key. This will start the quest for the Ring in Amira as well as give you an amulet of RK and a shrine of RK, which are 35 points of health combined. When you enter the Hall of the Dead, enter, turn around, exit, and then turn around again and enter it. This will skip the dialogue the fastest. Walk forward, talk to the NPC, skip through her dialogue, go to the back until you find a shrine of RK, touch it if you want to, and if you still haven't gone to 25 restoration, there is a skill book close to the bed. Tell Brother Verilis everything is okay, he should give you the amulet. Now you can walk up to the kitchen, close to where the Jarl is, and complete the other quest that you had. Basically, you need to talk to the court wizard, Caselmo. You need to talk to one of the kitchen maids, and you need to talk to the Jarl's assistant. Finally, we can go to Falkreath. Falkreath is one of the better cities if you want easy access to a Shrine of Arcae, right over by the Hall of the Dead. Then you head over to the Dark Brotherhood Sanctuary to join them and get two sets of armor, one of which you can sell if you want to because some of the pieces are copied, but this should be one of the best in-slot light armor that you can use. And there you go, you should have a fair amount of good weapons, whether you are a one-handed or two-handed warrior. If you're a mage and you want a little bit of robes, you could do the quest for Molag Bal. The first enemy you have to kill in there, he actually has some apprentice robes, which can be pretty good. If you're an archer, you can steal a bow from Ayala's room in your Vasker, or you could use a crossbow. There's also one you can steal technically in Anniversary Edition. I didn't cover Anniversary Edition in this video, but that's another good option. So yeah, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.